Hey, what's up, everybody? I got the orange hat on. You know what that means. It is time to run it back. I'm Suli McCullough with my co-host, Dan Ratner. Let's get this basketball party started. Oh, I'm excited. Suli, every time we do this show, I'm amazed at how much we have to talk about. It's like we don't have enough time. So let, let me not waste any more time. Right. We got to get into it, dude. No, like Every get... week is a big week. Yeah. Okay. We're going to get right to your jersey. I noticed it right away, but tell yes. us why you're wearing it. Yes. Well, I am wearing the North Carolina Michael Jordan College jersey. And I have, I'm, of course, wearing this jersey because I'm a Michael Jordan fan, obviously. But Roy Williams retired uh, this week after 33 years in college basketball. He has a ton of accolades, 900 career wins, three uh, NC2A championships, and uh, a legend, a Hall of Fame legend. So uh, I thought this was an interesting fact. 21 first-round NBA players uh, to his credit, wow. uh, which is amazing. So uh, a little respect for Roy Williams uh, with March Madness uh, happening uh, and, and being incredible. I figured this would be the perfect jersey to represent Run It Back this week. I think that's perfect. And, you know, I did want to say Roy Williams retiring makes me feel old because really? I, remember, I remember when Dean Smith retired. I mean, exactly. Exactly. How did we yeah. get here? It's it, it's it's time. It's father time is undefeated. All right, uh, he he's had an amazing career though, and so it only felt right to just give him props. Yeah, and it's still March Madness, so I'm actually wearing my Syracuse shirt. Oh, nice, nice. Syracuse and, uh, had a good showing in the tournament. They did they their thing. For some reason, I always loved Syracuse, and I finally was like, you know what? I'm going to buy a shirt. I'm going to Nice, nice. It was the time. ultimate sign of respect. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. All right, now, speaking of time, let's jump right into NBA Prime Cuts because we yes. know. Yes, yes, yes. This is, this this is, is, the is it. This is the entree. What we did was we teased you with the jersey, which was a little bit of a, hey, do you like some fresh salad? Would you like a small <laughs> salad plate? And now it's time for Prime Cuts. And, man, Prime Cuts are stacked. That's right. Now, yeah, we're well done this week. You want to start us off or you want me to jump in? Uh, well, this first story is so negative. Why don't you start us off? Okay, and then I'll, I'll just give my, 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 my thoughts about it. I'm a very optimistic therapist, so I can bring down the negativity. Now, yes, yeah, and was... I am feeling some negativity. This is my least favorite story to start an episode of Run It Back. Okay, yeah, because it's a, it's about a private private beef between Kevin Durant and Michael Rappaport went public. Yes. And it got ugly. Yes. Now, very ugly. Very you, ugly. Tell us the Let story. me just give you the let me give you the, the the lowdown on this. First of all, I have to full disclosure, Michael Rappaport is a good friend of mine. I've known him for years. Uh I love Mike. Uh Kevin Durant, a favorite as a basketball player. I love his game. And you would think these two would be a great... Mi no, it did not go down like that. Michael Rappaport disclosed a private uh, DM conversation between him and Kevin Durant. Apparently, Michael Rappaport did not like how a TV interview went down. Uh, things escalated quickly. Homophobic language was used. There were threats. Uh, Kevin Durant talked about uh, Mike's wife, who I know and I'm a friend of. It got ugly. Whoa. They say it goes down in the DMs. Not like this. <laughs> not like this. <laughs> wow. You know, I have to say also, I did not know that Michael Rappaport had private beefs. I thought they were all public. Because that's yeah, Michael Rappaport. Well, that's the thing, dude. Like, I think if you're a guy that makes your money off being a provocateur, uh, which right. is an upscale word I learned uh, last night while doing a show in Beverly Hills. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, if that's how you make your money, of course you're going to ruffle people's feathers. What I hate about this, though, is they're both bigger than this. You know what I mean? And this opens up a huge can of worms with... You know, do you take private conversations and disclose them? I'm sure as a therapist that uh, touches a nerve for you, the use of homophobic language. And I like KD's game, right? You know yeah. what I mean? I like seeing easy money sniper be easy money sniper. Like I don't. This is a side of Kevin I don't want to see. It just got ugly on both sides. And. The fact that Fox News picked this story up, 
I mean, that's when you know it's really, really ugly. Oh, yeah. No, they love ugly over there. Yeah, they, they thrive on ugly. All right, so let's move to more positive view uh, about just about Durant, about what, what's actually going on in the NBA is the Nets are clearly, I think, seen by a lot of people as the team to beat. After they added Blake Griffin and LaMarcus Aldridge, it's only more that way. Right, right. It's become more of a, a, a way station for former stars to just go hit your wagon. It's like it, it, it's, a, it's a music festival. The Brooklyn Nets are a music festival, it's and true. they just added two extra guitarists. Yeah, it's it's Lollapalooza. No, diff- different acts even. I mean, yes, yes. Okay, now we've got we've got Harden just just uh, had a little bit of hamstring tightness. Right. Is right. this anything serious? Are you well? Your... Steve Nash is saying that it's not serious and that he should be back momentarily. But this is the guy that makes that whole engine go. As we know, he's having a MVP like year since he's left Houston, and uh, you know his performance has been uh, amazing. Like, but he is the engine. He's the point guard. He's the one that makes that team go. And if you're sidelined without him, that means Kyrie Irving has to do more point guard, uh, you know, duties, which he's more comfortable creating when he has the ball in his hands. So we're going to see how this affects this team. So far, it's not really affecting them at all. They still somehow are managing wins and they're the talk of the East. Like they are the team to beat. And that is saying something with the Bucs amassing wins. Uh, You know, it's like. All is right in the world of the Brooklyn Nets as long as you don't go into anyone's DMs. Exactly. And, you know, I, I wanted to say this. I, one thing I love about the NBA season, being as long as it is, you, yes. you see these evolutions, and it could be that something like this actually helps the Nets in the long run because they're going to have to learn how do we play without Harden. Yes. Maybe, he, get, maybe yes. he gets injured, you know, just even a slight way, and they yes. got to play without him. And Harden's a fairly durable player. Like, it's rare that he gets injured. Yep. But I do think, um, you know, the, 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 the minutes that he's amassed, the duties of running that team, having to pick up the slack without KD being there, uh, integrating these new players, all that does take a toll on your body. So hopefully he's back up and running soon, and uh, we can just talk n- Nets basketball. Like uh, Nets on court basketball. That's that's what we want to be doing. Now that's speaking, what we want as fans. That's what we want to enjoy. Now, on the other side in the yes. West, you got the Lakers. You know LeBron's LeBron's out right now. Yes, Jeannie Buss had a take on the competitiveness brought on by the Nets expanding super team. Like, yeah, and yeah. I wonder, are we gonna just keep expanding super teams? Like, you remember there was like a big three, and now. Now do we need it to be like a big four? All the, What's happening here? It, it seems like if you want to have a shot in the NBA, you basically have to be a baby NBA all-star team. That seems to be my feelings because the Nets are the closest to that. They've got multiple all-stars. they got guys with commercials. Like, they're a baby all-star team. I think the Lakers, you know, with their recent pickup, uh, they kind of have that same feel. But with their two superstars being out – uh, you know, it, it, like for a minute, it was kind of doom and gloom in, in L.A. You know what I mean? Like, like yeah. you know, it was like the sky is falling. Like, we're not going to recover from this. Uh, the, 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 the debut of Andre Drummond to fill the gap while LeBron and A.D. gets uh, get healthy, that, um, I mean, it was, it, as far as a debut goes, I wouldn't say it was a great debut, uh, I'm not going to put a lot of emphasis on this, but when you lose a toe, like a toenail, yeah, that that's not a good thing. You know no. what I mean? Like, if you're going to no. play for the Lakers, I recommend getting a nice manicure pedicure before you take the court, because <laughs> you never know what's going to happen. You know I, thought you, I, mean? gonna, like I thought you were going to say if you're going to play for the Lakers, I recommend you 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 have a place where you can get a new toe. And I was like. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's LA going on. LA is with the this. place, though, where I'm sure someone is selling toes. Uh, listen, LA yeah. or New York, but in yes. New York, like yes. it was like related to the ma- the. Mafia I mean, Detroit, you can get a toe for uh for cheap. Yeah, yeah. But you don't ask any questions. No, you're not getting the best toe there. No, no. Th- this has gone to a place I did not expect it to go, which I love <laughs> about this show. All right, so I love what Jeannie Buss did say, though. You know what I mean? Where some people would move away from the uh the challenge, she said, "Bring it on." 
And you gotta love that. I love Jeannie Buss's moxie. Uh, she's a boss chick, if ever there was one. And I love that she's like, hey, bring it on. You guys got your guys, we got our guys. Let's battle it out and see who takes home this ring. I, I think, I, I totally agree. That attitude, in fact, I think that attitude is really emblematic of the NBA. Because yes, yes. Everybody wants to take the best punch. You know, yes. Michael Jordan didn't shy away from that. Uh, right. The great, the greats want to take on the greats. Right. And you know, just as the as the leader of that storied franchise, that's what you want to hear. You know what I mean? That's what you want to hear is bring it on. Like we're not running away from this. We got a squad. You got a squad. Let's see what happens. Absolutely. And uh, so now we're going to switch gears just a little bit again. We're going to okay. go back to the NCAA tournament because okay, I love that. We just have to acknowledge that what the UCLA Bruins have done. Uh, they they went from one of the first four play-in teams. Can you see how I, much I'm smiling already? Yeah, exactly. Just the mere mention. Like, I, I can't even You're contain like, my enthusiasm. He's, <laughs> if the screen fr seems to freeze, it Suli hasn't... It's not his technology. It's just he's it's, got the I'm, permanent I'm smile. I'm beaming. I'm beaming. Do you know how happy I am about UCLA making the final four? And this is a school that my major was low-interest student loans, okay? This wow. Is school, <laughs> this is a school that, I mean, I can't believe, I, I don't even want to say the good fortune. It's just why we play the game. You know what I mean? Like, yep. yeah, UCLA was 11 seed. They had to play their way into the tournament. But look at where they are now. They are on the cusp of possibly winning a national championship. That is unbelievable. It's just that's un unbelievable. Whatever they about already... an underdog overachieving. Yeah. Now speaking of UCLA, we gotta okay. talk Russell Westbrook. Yes, yes we do. Yes we do. Do you, I love these segues by the way. They're seamless almost. They're seamless so, it's almost crazy. Almost like we planned it. <laughs> it. Almost like we've done our homework. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> Russell Westbrook uh you know, love him or hate him, he's a polarizing player. As a Bruin, uh, I once again my bias or uh, I I can't stop smiling. You just mentioned UCLA, I'm beaming. Uh, Russell Westbrook, uh, he 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 was historic this week. Uh, he notched a triple double that has only been seen since the likes of Irvin Magic Johnson and Oscar Robinson. His numbers were phenomenal. Can you please? Just let the people know what his numbers were alone so we can just take a pregnant pause and enjoy excellence. Yeah, and, and meanwhile, it was against the Pacers. They're no joke. Yes, 30, the Pacers are a, a, a playoff team. 35 points, 14 rebounds, and 21 assists. So this that is, is the unbelievable. First, first 30, 10, 20 triple-double since Magic Johnson, do I have that right? Yes, since Magic Johnson. Yes, yes. I mean, talk about uh, working hard for the money. Yeah. Like that is doing a lot. And a lot of people make this criticism about Westbrook that I hate where they go, oh, he just pads his stats. And no, no. That is, that is not appreciating what this gifted athlete can do. Okay, now... I, we're going to spend more time on Westbrook. We know there's more time coming on Westbrook. Yes. So yes. I'm going to shift gears and I'm going to go into I'm going to go into some high speed because last week we did not get to the state of the Celtics and I think we have to. Oh, absolutely, but, absolutely. So I just we're going to make a stop through on the Utah Jazz because okay. they always deserve a mention. They we're going to show them the respect they deserve on this. Show. Absolutely, that is the thing about Run It Back. We 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 respect the teams that are doing it on the court, and the Jazz are doing it on the court. They had a story this week that was really interesting where their plane, their charter plane, had to make an emergency landing uh, because the the engine was hit by a, a flock of birds, and it was a terrifying experience. I watched the post-game interviews with these players, and you could tell they were texting family members. They weren't sure they were going to get out of this, and uh, it, it was pretty scary. It just brought to mind to me what that other side of being a professional athlete is that a lot of people don't really think about, is you gotta rely on air travel. Yeah, everything is first class and you're flying charter, but when you're up in the air, anything can happen. And as a comedian who travels for a living, 
I know what that's like because I've been on some scary flights. Now, that being said, these guys are, they still have the best record in the NBA. They are first uh, by far. They're 35 and 11, I believe, which is unbelievable. And I just wonder how this little bit of adversity is going to affect this team moving forward. It may be that extra little thing that galvanizes them where they make a deep playoff run. We're just going to have to see. And that's a great point because the chemistry of a team, it gets tested at different times and different things, different things test that metal. Yes. And yes. we're, and I think the disrespect they get sometimes is going to do that too. Yes, absolutely. Now, absolutely. We've got, the Suns have a similar thing going on. They, they weren't expected to be this good. Devin Booker right. scored 45 points. They won their fourth straight. They're the two seed in the West. The Phoenix yes. Suns are the two seed in the West. Which is uh, really didn't... impressive because at the start of the season, you would have had them maybe making the playoffs. I had them making the playoffs, but I did not think that they would be this high in the West. And the West, I, I mean, both conferences are ultra competitive, but you really got to be playing some good basketball to occupy that upper echelon in the West. So Absolutely. shout out to the Suns. They are overperforming. Uh, notching up wins. That's a team you can't take lightly. I love that Devin Booker is an emerging star, and he's putting up buckets. All right, now listen. We're gonna. I want to spend the rest of the time on the Celtics just for a little bit because I've, <laughs> I've, had, I've been itching to say this. I've been itching to say this for years. I have said it in private, in private yes. DMs. Yes, private oh, DMs, in your I've private DMs, yeah. But now we're going to make it public. It was wow. a DM between me and myself, so don't Yeah, worry. sure, sure. But, You've been saying this to yourself in your own DMs. I, I feel that Brad Stevens, he's a great guy and he's a great coach. But I do not understand the praise this guy has gotten as an NBA coach. Yes. What yes. he did at Butler was amazing. Sure. But he was talked about as like he's the greatest coach. He hasn't done anything all that impressive with Boston. And I got to say this. I don't know why, but Danny Ainge as the GM also gets too much credit in my mind. Yes. Everyone's like, oh, my God, he won with the big three. I'm like, yeah, if you trade Kevin Garnett to a team, you have a much better chance of winning. And you so, bring in Ray Allen, uh, chances are things are going to go for real. And you he, already have Paul Pierce. Uh, right. Good things happen. And people were like, oh, Danny Ainge is a wizard. I'm like, listen, if you have the pieces and you are one of the storied franchises, it's a lot easier. I give Danny Ainge a lot of credit for the player that he was. Sure. As a GM, I think he gets way too much credit. I don't know. What do you think? This, this is a hot take. This feels like a hot take. This is a hot take. You're going to offend some. You're you're going to offend some key members of Celtic Pride. I am. I am. But I'm, I'm, I. You know what? I I really can't. I really can't uh, argue with this one. Ah. I felt it for a while. Like I, I feel like Brad Stevens gets so much praise. Like he is this 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 genius mind that is the answer to all things Celtic Green. But at this point, he's really under delivered. Like under delivered in a major way, and no one ever comes for him. So it might be time to for Brad Stevens to sit in the hot seat. Now I'm just gonna switch topics. This this is this is a hot topic, but I'm just gonna say it. If okay. Brad Stevens, if Brad Stevens were black, would the same thing be happening? I'm just gonna wow I'm bringing it up. Wow, wow, <laughs> what is going on right now? That is, hey, uh, I'm gonna say you've got to you. He would have been fired. You're right. You're at you're one hundred percent right. I'm sorry. I'm just he would have been it. fired because you know what? Uh the coach has to pay the price when talent doesn't perform. Yes. And he's had his pick of the litter in terms of talent. Uh he had, you know, his guy that got hurt. And then uh like I think even bringing Kimba Walker in, they thought that was gonna be a major addition. I love Kimba Walker. I love what he was doing for years under the radar. And I thought this was going to be the perfect opportunity for him, right? But something is going on. Danny Ainge has said in the past that we don't have good enough players, which I think is a cop-out, personally. I think you ha he has great players. Jason Tatum's great. Jalen Brown's great. I also, think also, if you're the GM 
and you're saying we need better players. Who's supposed to bring in the better players? Right. Get the better. Yeah, yeah, that's your job. That is your job. I think that puts undue scrutiny on the players when the players are doing the best they can. I think that team has a lot of talent. I, you know, and young talent and superstar. Jason Statham is a is a superstar. I love watching that guy's game. He can do so much on the court, but there is something wrong with that organization. Uh, like I, I don't know who you bring in instead of Brad Stevens, but if I was Brad Stevens, I would be periodically cleaning up my office. I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah. I'm just gonna say one other thing though. Okay. Brad Stevens and Danny Ainge, they they could still get it done. Them. But yes. there's only one way to do it. You got to look yourself in the mirror and know you're not getting it done. Yes, yes, that's the problem though of uh, of sitting in that that seat and wielding that power. At some point, uh, you know, I think the fan base is going to dictate what the next move is. And if everybody's you know? giving you if everybody's giving you credit where credit is not due, you're not going right. to look yourself in the mirror. Right? No, you're not. You're not. You're just so, going to be drunk with power and continue to think that you're doing great. Yeah, but the but, record speaks otherwise. But I, I, I tend to have an axe to grind when people are getting credit where they don't deserve it too much. You know, it's what? okay. I, I'm with you on that. I'm with you on that. Like All credit right, should now, be earned, not given. Now we're gonna shift gears. I, 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 we wanted to get to the whole story about Nick's assistant Mike Woodson finalizing the six year contract with Indiana, and obviously I'm getting into it and saying it. But I want to yes. get into the meat of that, and I think we should. We're gonna save that for later in the show. I'm gonna come back. Okay, to great. It. Great. Yeah, we can because, come back to that. Because we're going to do it in who's hot or who's not. We're going to talk about assistant coaches being hot, right? Yes. Now. Yes. Okay. Yes, because that's it. Yeah, that's that's a great that's a great point. I, I love that. That uh, you know, that's an issue that I've been seeing in the league where these assistant coaches get these opportunities, but a lot of times they're more well known than the head coaches. Yeah. And yeah. they're more accomplished. They have a, a, a better NBA resume, but it's like they've hit this ceiling where. Uh, they don't get those head coaching jobs, which are coveted yeah. positions, but positions that should go to the most qualified people. It's a little bit like when Phil Jackson was an assistant coach for Doug Collins. He, yes, you know, absolutely. Doug absolutely. Collins was great, but yes. Phil Collins. Phil, Phil, I just said Phil, Phil Collins. Collins. That's hilarious. <laughs> but Phil Jackson studio was even better. <laughs> Phil Jackson and Doug Collins had a child, and he was named Phil Collins. All right, so now you bring us in. You bring us into this next this next All segment. All right, uh, this is a, a segment we did last week that went really well. You played the, gra- the game great. And this is called Know Your NBA Legends. And in this segment, what we do, last week I showed you pictures and you had to identify the, leg- the legend and then give me one fun fact about them. So this time we're turning the table. You have selected the pictures and I have to give you who they are and one fun fact. So That's let's right. go. Know he your NBA s- legends. I'm he ready. He hasn't seen this at all. I no, no. This is this is happening live in the moment. This is real. All right, let's bring it up. The okay, first Okay, number 1. Here we first go. First picture. That of course is the great Dikembe Mutombo. That's pretty easy. That was when he was with the I Hawks. wanted to start I wanted to start you you're off starting pretty easy. easy. Okay, you're starting easy. But that's super easy. He has a commercial right now where he swats things away and goes, no, 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 no. Well, here's the other thing. I mean, so, listen, sometimes I'm going to give you a hard one. And there are some really hard ones in here. Okay. Right? We'll see. Okay, but that but one's super easy. I this mean, one's super easy, if you but watch I wanted, TV, you can I just, do Dikembe Mutombo. I kind of wanted to just honor Dikembe. Yeah, and, well, and, I, and I did. I did an yeah, impression did. of Dikembe And the Mutombo. great voice. No, 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 no. no. Okay, let's go to the uh, next one. Get out of my house. <laughs> let's go to the next one. Okay, now there's two players in here. Whoa. I want you to identify. See if you can identify both. But Okay, I, I'm seeing there's a Toronto Raptors jersey and a Lakers jersey, and it looks like they're about to start making out. I don't think they're starting. I think they're they're, they're actually making out. Okay, yeah, this so is, they're this in is love. Deep in. Uh, I mean, I can I can't see the face, but I can only make out the bicep. Uh, and from that era of jerseys, <laughs> it's, huh, is, is it Kwame Brown? Are you talking about the Toronto player or the No, Laker I'm player? talking about the Laker player. No, the Laker player is, then the Laker player is who I want you to identify. It is not Kwame Brown. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it's the center. It's Andrew Bynum. No, 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 not. you're, 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 listen, I gave you a tough one. It's very hard to identify. I mean, uh, Samaki you... Walker. No, you want me to tell you? 
Uh, yeah, because I've struck out with three, and Samagi Walker was an obscure guess. That is Anton Jameson. No way. Yeah, you just don't recognize him because of his actions right there. Yeah, yeah. See, I thought, like, he had, like, kind of a Dwight Howard-ish bicep. Yeah. But the shape of his head was kind of boiled peanut-ish, which threw me off. Yeah, it, it is. The shape of his head was altered. I just, so... I told That's you it was going to get one. more challenging. Yeah, yeah. You know what? See, I was a little too cocky with <laughs> Tumbo, and look what I got. There we go. Okay, let's move to the next one. All right. Wow. I, huh. That's a tough one, too. I, if I could, I can't really, like, see these that, because they're small. Like, is that Otis Thorpe? It is not Otis Thorpe. Uh, you know, this is interesting. We're going to learn in this game. Uh, it may okay. be that I made them too hard. <laughs> you might I started have. you off with Dikemi Matumbo. I threw you off. And by yeah. the way, Dikemi Matumbo is in this picture. So, okay. It's it's a Rockets player. You can see 92-93 rookie card. Okay. That might give you a okay. clue. Okay, 92-93 rookie card. Uh, and the number's 25? And I'm going to give you a, I'm going to give you a big hint. Okay. So he, he was on the Rockets championship team, you can see, because they won in, in 94. That's correct. He was in his second year. This guy has won a lot of championships. Uh, Greg, uh, uh, not Greg Anthony. Um, uh, shoot, man. He's done it on a lot of different teams. On a lot of different teams. How many yes. championships have he, has he won? I believe he has won seven championships. Oh, that's Big Shot Bob. There you go. I couldn't even go. make it out because the picture's so tiny. <laughs> it looks like a guy. It looks like like he looks like a two guard. But see, one of the reasons I put this on here is this picture is so ridiculous. How yes. is this your rookie? Yeah, card? that's this? yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> like that's that wasn't even his game. Like okay. he did that maybe once for that shot only, and then was like, I'm just gonna sit and shoot three pointers. I think I think there's gonna be revenge on me next week because yeah, you're gonna dude, you're gonna do some I'm gonna, obscure yeah, pictures. I'm gonna. I'm going to go back to like some black and white pictures from the early 50s. Oh, don't worry. We're getting into that. Let's move to the next one. <laughs> there it is. There it is. You That's an it. easy one. I mean, come on. It's Pistol Pete Maravich. Okay. I'm just, it's easy, but I was like, I don't know. Is he going to know this, this female gymnast? Uh, he, 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 That's he's, hilarious. He's, <laughs> he does have, he totally does have Dorothy Hamill hair. I will give you that. <laughs> he clearly has Dorothy Hamill hair. This... I am a huge Pete Maravich fan. A friend of mine, Wayne Fetterman, wrote a book about Pete Maravich. Um, I am at, like, the dude averaged 44 points a game in college, all right? He, I mean, he doesn't get the credit that he deserves for being an innovative wizard with the basketball. I would love to see Pete Maravich play in this era because I still think he could cook people. It would be amazing. And, and one of the reasons I included him is this is called Know Your NBA Legend. I wanted yes, you. Yes. I wanted you know for people out there. Some people don't know who this guy is. You have to know who Pete. You Maravich definitely is. need to know. If you were a fan of white chocolate, Jason Williams, you will love Pete Maravich. Pete yeah. Maravich had that same game, but with Dorothy Hamill hair. So now I'm just going to make one more observation before we move to the next one. Do you see okay. the guy's mutton chop? That's like oh yeah yeah it's huge. Yeah. You could not. Yeah. I mean, it looks just like almost juicy. Okay, yeah. we'll move it, to the it next looks one. like a horse's uh, foot. It, it, does, it does. It does. It looks like a hoof. He's wearing a hoof on a, on the side of his face. Okay, next one. This is the bonus round. This is this is the bonus round, and I'm going to give you two. That bonuses. is, of course, uh, the inventor of basketball. Okay. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Uh, Orville name? Redenbacher, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> Who invented basketball, Suli? Uh, that would be uh, Dr. Naismith. Yes, Dr. James Naismith. Dr. Okay. James Naismith. I don't know the year. Was it like, what, 1892 or something like that? That sounds about right. And yeah, he, I would, he, yeah does, he does 1800s. remind me of Orville Redenbacher or Orville Wright. Some Orville. Yes, yeah, one of the Wright brothers. Or, yeah, exactly. All right, I'm going to give exactly. you one more. I'm going to give you oh, one more. Oh, wow, I, I just, wow. I bonus, bonus. I couldn't help myself. Bonus, bonus. That would be uh, Robert Parrish, the That's chief. Right. Uh, I did not realize he played for the Hornets. Yeah, was see, that his final year in the league? It was his final year in the league. I I had floated this idea to you. It would be good for us to look at these these times where somebody ended up in a uniform. I that really you're like, like that. This. Happened? I like this. Yeah, I don't even remember that he was a uh, that he went to the Charlotte Hornets. That's pretty great. So I, big. Up I didn't the either. Chief. 
That's why when I cheese. came up, that's I was fantastic. Like, I like that. All right, let's get cool. Let's jer- get that would be a cool jersey to have in your collection. Absolutely. I mean, I, I don't know where you can get it. But no, it, that would be a hard somewhere. find. I mean, there's at least that one. We know that someone one. has it. All right, so let's go to dunk of the week. Man, I'm about to dunk on this fool. All right, it's now time for the dunk of the week. I love this dunk. It was fantastic. It's the great Russell Westbrook dunking on Bismack Biombo of the Hornets. This dunk is just nasty. And look, the look on his face, he just he could you could feel his ass. and and everyone can feel this moment where whoosh, Yeah. He takes off. Yeah. He's like Superman. Yeah. This is like even if you can't dunk, you kind of share in Westbrook's yeah. bravado. You're like, "Yeah, we just dunked on you." Yeah, like it's, it's like, we. You take the we pronoun with this dunk. It's true, and that yeah, that's, that's the joy. That's the joy of the NBA. It, it that that dunk was just raw athleticism. Like if you was. could bottle that and sell that as an energy drink, that's what I'm drinking twenty four seven three sixty five. Absolutely, and 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 I love that you can really feel it. Now I think yeah. we do actually have one more dunk to show. Well, yeah, this week was interesting because there was a meaningless dunk at the end of the game by Ja Morant that I think we have to feature because it's just young legs doing young things. Let let's see it. This is after regulation. Yes. <laughs> yeah, let me just let me just show you the hops I have. Oh, let me just, I'm just show you do what that. kind of hops I got. Yeah, no big deal. I'm young, I'm young. Yeah. yeah, he's like he's like I just you know I just yeah. felt like doing that. No big deal. You know what that was? That was a dunk. Like if you've ever played pickup and you're playing with a young dude that eats a bag of Doritos beforehand and oh, that's yes. all he's yes. had all day. Yep, that was yep. that kind of dunk. Yeah, he's like, like I'm I just gonna yeah. This is this is Dorito juice. I'm dunking on you. I don't even need to eat lunch. I just yeah, eat exactly. Doritos. Exactly. I just bought an <laughs> 85 cent bag of Doritos and now I'm about to posterize you. All right, let's move us into our next segment. Another one that you have to announce because I love the way you do it. It's time for our our personal favorite. Say what? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) We look back at the things that players said this week and just assess them. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to read you a quote from now Brooklyn Nets, Blake Griffin. Okay. Yeah, he's moved on and he's clearly feeling himself. Yep. He says, all I've heard is how bad I am. You sign with this team and everybody's like, that's not fair. So I understand that he's like saying, "Well, if I'm so if I'm so nothing, why are you making a big deal that I sign here?" But are Blake Griffin and LaMarcus Aldridge taking the easy way out? Is this a cheat code to an NBA championship? We've seen people try to do this, chasing a ring. Is right. that Carl Malone that, did that? Gary Payton did that late in their careers. It's something that happens, and it depends on the players. Some players, you totally get it. You give them a pass. Uh, Charles Barkley went to the Rockets. Uh, to play with that stack team late in his career. I wasn't mad at that. There is something I have an issue with when it comes to Blake Griffin because I feel like, you know, like when he went to the Brooklyn Nets, they played the the Detroit Pistons shortly thereafter. And he was mean mugging his old team. And I just kind of felt like, eh, that's a little weak, Blake. Like, you're better than that. Yeah, you know I what mean, I mean? Wh- like, I understand the competitiveness. I get all that, but come on, dude. Yeah, it's it's kind of like when somebody wins a big poker hand and then they and uh, over somebody else, and then they start analyzing what they did well. Yes, and you're yes. like, shut yes. up, man. Yeah, shut just up, play, dude. Yeah, <laughs> and then it comes into question. Like, he didn't dunk for over a year. It's like, were you sandbagging while you were with the Detroit Pistons? Like, you know what I mean? Like, all of a sudden, you can dunk again. Like were you holding out on the dunks? Like I, I I'm not, no. I'm not with that. No, we saw Lamarcus. How he was... I don't have a problem with though. He, I think he... Lamarcus Aldridge did what he had to do for the Spurs. I think the Spurs were a class organization by uh, buying him out and letting him go elsewhere. So I'm cool with Lamarcus. Well, Blake, I, I expect a little more out of a guy that does a prank show. I, I, I totally, I totally agree. Good point. And uh, <laughs> here's the, here's the other thing. When when guys are bought out, what are they supposed to do? It's yes, okay. exactly, exactly. Go chase why, a ring. Why would you go to a bottom feeding team if you yeah. have a chance to go to a, a, a organization that has a chance to win a championship? Why wouldn't you take that? It's like it's like courting the beautiful girl. You know what I mean? Like, sure, there's ducks out there, but if you have a, if the pretty girl likes you, 
be with the pretty girl. And it's only for a couple months also. Exactly. You know, they're not signing like a long-term contract. That Listen, we know that's how Robert Parrish ended up on the Hornets. He was right. clearly chasing a ring. That's right. <laughs> that's <laughs> right. Totally the opposite. He won so many rings, and then he ends up on the Hornets. <laughs> All right, we're going to go to another quote. This is from two-time NBA MVP Giannis Antetokounmpo. Yes. The Greek freak. I'm yes. really impressed that I said the name so well. Very well done. This he said this moment today. This was a, this was a touching moment with brothers Thanasis, not to be confused with Thanos. Yes, right. Who is a superhero? <laughs> yes. In the Bucks win versus the Lakers, he said, "This moment today was probably my favorite moment I've had so far in the NBA." I think that is unbelievable. Uh, you know, just to see the three brothers hugging it out in their respective jerseys and the joy that they had, like that is, it was a beautiful moment. Like I couldn't help but feel a little something. Uh, you know, it it it's so hard to make it as an NBA player, and especially where those guys come from. Sure, they had talent, but I love that afterwards Giannis was completely open about the days when they were all in a in a one bedroom wishing that they would make it to the NBA and for that to really happen it was a really cool moment like that's it was such a great feel good moment and you can't you like it made me root for that guy and root for his brothers too absolutely and you know I, what i mean I think, like i was like i i need to i need to i need to have a Giannis jersey well the, that that's the thing the nba is, has a lot of feel good moments yes and, absolutely absolutely and sometimes with the negativity those feel good moments get lost. So this is this is one of those stories where where we take say what and we put it in perspective. <laughs> and this okay, is a feel let's, good. Let's say what? The, let's get to the next. Say what? I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna get my Sully impression out. Say what? You'll help me do it. We're returning to who who seems to be kind of the theme of the Russell Westbrook's all over this show. Yes, yeah. This is a very Westbrook infused episode of Run It Back. And it does and it, he deserves to have that with all yes, of these things. Yes. But he said something really interesting. So there, there's, you know, talk about him not having a championship and doesn't really affect him. Right. He says this, that in his eyes, his legacy is much more about what he does in the NBA. So here's the quote. A championship don't change my life. I'm sorry. I'm going straight with the, I know that's yeah, not proper how grammar, said, but that's what he said. Real. Yeah. He said, I'm happy. I was a champion once I made it to the NBA. I love this. I grew up in the streets. I am a champion. I don't have to be an NBA champion. I know many people that got NBA championships that are miserable. Haven't done anything for their community. Haven't done anything for the people in our world. And for me, man, my legacy, like I mentioned before, is not based on what I do on this court. I'm not going to play basketball my whole life. My legacy is what I do off the floor. How many people I'm able to impact and inspire along my journey, man. That's how I keep my head down and keep pushing because it's very important that you don't let the negativity seep in because it's been like that my whole career, honestly. There's no other player that kind of takes the heat that I take constantly. See, I think it's great that you shared the full quote because a lot of what sports media is doing is they're taking just the first part that, oh, if I'm not a champion, I'm cool with it because I grew up from the streets. And they're pulling that apart and they're making that the sum total of this guy not being a winner, which you saw the dunk of the week. Like if you it, you can't dunk like that if you're not in it to win it. And I think that Westbrook's view of a greater version of himself is what I, I hope for all people, actually, you're not the sum total of what you do. You should strive to be more than that. If you're able to achieve and climb the highest mountain, great. That's fantastic. Uh, I, I heard Isaiah Thomas talk about this, and I loved Isaiah's point about it. Isaiah made a great point. He said, look, yeah, you're a champion. Yeah, you're a great player. Yeah, you've been an MVP. But to be an NBA champion is a very special, rarefied air. And... That should be your goal as an NBA player. If you get there, great. If not, that's cool too. But that is rarefied air and a special place for only a select few. And I thought that was a great point. And I thought it was an honest point. And what Isaiah Thomas was doing was he was preserving how special it is to be an NBA champion. Yeah, and it is. But I also think I love that Westbrook is all saying it's also special to be an NBA player. I, yes. From where yes. I came 
and what it was like to get there. Yes. I also love that you said, you know, there's all these sound bites. If you take only the sound bite at the end, there's no player that kind of takes the heat that I take constantly. Then it right. becomes a negative story. Right. He said right. a lot of things in there. And that's why right. on Say right. What? <laughs> we, we make That's sure to get really. We give you it. the real on say what. <laughs> All right, now you you had a you had a you had a fun fact, a Brooklyn. Oh Nets yeah, fun this fact. this great fun fact about the Brooklyn Nets and James Harden stepbacks. Uh, if you can just give the details for the people out there about the number of stepbacks that James Harden has shot versus other players, it's truly remarkable. It is insane. So since 2013 to 2014, James Harden has attempted. 2,153 step-back threes. Nobody else in the league has tried more than 782. 782. He almost has three times the number of, of the step next back. biggest one. That is unreal. Like, he, you know, as much credit as we give Steph Curry for his three-point shooting acumen, which is great, uh, we really kind of got to bow down to James Harden and say he is the innovator of the step-back. He is absolutely. clearly... The guy, like he's like the 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 Kareem Abdul Jabbar of step back of step back jumpers. That's that's right. Yeah, I mean he he it's his sky hook. Yes, it is his sky hook. All right, and he will shoot it on just about anybody a, on the run, lot. ready to go, and will make it. it. And a lot of the time. Okay, so now we're gonna move to who's hot or who's not. Oh, and this feels like a speed round. I have a this feeling is a, this, this is, is a speed round. Yes, you you okay. you got my tonality right. There. Yes, I you did. I could tell. It. You were like, all okay. right, it's time to. Let's go. One, one, one hot. Vanessa Bryant shared that her eldest daughter Natalia got into the got into USC. That's fantastic. How, how her father, the great Kobe Bryant, will be so proud of her. She's also been accepted to Loyola Marymount, the University of Oregon, and has applied to NYU. So yes, this is just this is one of those feel good stories. You know, it's a great story. And what I loved about it was Vanessa Bryant posted this on her Instagram, and she went so far as to order her daughter Natalia, a special pair of Kobe 4s in the USC colorway. And even as a UCLA Bruin, I can give respect to that. Like, I saw those shoes and I was like, I can't wear them, but they're pretty dope shoes. And Absolutely. I love that she made a big deal about that. Uh, Natalia wants to go to uh, NYU, but Vanessa thinks it's too far. So she's really pushing her going to USC. And I so, understand that. I mean, yeah. with, with with a tragedy of that magnitude and, and wanting to keep family close. I understand that. But Yeah, absolutely. I, but, I mean, it was just a great feel-good story. It's nice to see those daughters thriving and that family able to have some joy. So that that is a that is a fantastic hot story. Okay, now this next one is it's a it's a quick hot one. We're going to need to come back to this one cuz I want a longer discussion on this. Okay. White Men Can't Jump was released this week in 1992. So that means yes. we are celebrating the 19th anniversary of White Men Can't Jump. Unbelievable. Why Unbelievable. 19? I, I don't know. That's just what's happening. But Yeah, that's what we're doing. Uh, White Men Can't Jump is a phenomenal movie, a great ode to pick up basketball. Uh, Wesley Snipes' outfits alone make that movie worth watching. Absolutely. Like, he's buff. He's got these, like, little tank tops on and... Uh, he he's he plays in a in a weird uh bicycle hat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I looked at him and I was like, "What happened to Willie Mays Hayes?" Yes, <laughs> that's not Willie Mays Hayes. Uh, Woody Harrelson is uh, Billy Hoyle. He uh, he plays in a great pair of uh, Nikes, like the old school forces that are great. In fact, in the sneaker community, they don't even call them what they originally were. They call them the Billy Hoyles. They call so them. So that's Hoyles pretty now. cool. Okay, so we're going to have a, a discussion a different time. About yeah, we're going to have to go deep. We're going to deep dive into that. We, once again, run it back this week. Uh, too much show. We've much, really given too you we're, too much. We're like bubbling out. So Yes. Uh, Carl, Carl Town Sr., Carl, Anthony's, uh, Carl Anthony Town's dad, attended his first game since his wife Jackie died due to complications from coronavirus last year. Yes. Carl Town Sr. said, we're ready to get it done. Going to do it for his mom tonight. And Great story. Great story, and just puts in context what these players are dealing with, specifically what Carl Anthony Town and his family are dealing with. Uh, losing his mother was was tragic, and a and a and a and an unfortunate reality of what this virus has 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 meant to the world and to fam families individually. So, so happy for him that he could take in a live game, see his son play, and. Uh, 
and, and 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 uplift his family in that way. So that's one of those stories that that just it, it feels good. You're glad to see it, and uh, you know, a, a, just just a great win for the for the town family. Yeah, and for humanity, it's like yes, to, absolutely. Feeling. I, absolutely. I love that about this league. Okay, yes. I'm gonna quickly run through the other hot. Who's hot? Because we are really on the hot seat now. Yes, we yes. got Joel Embiid still out. Tobias yep. Harris is especially hot. He's got a yeah, grudge for not making the All Star team. He's picking up the he's picking up the slack. Tobias Harris made a list of everyone that didn't vote for him, uh, coaches, players, all that. So he's making a list. He's checking it twice. He's giving people buckets. We love. You're going to find out who's naughty or nice. Steph yes. Curry is back. He scored 32 as the Warriors blew out the Bulls. Yes, he had they another 30 plus game last night. He's balling. Uh, okay. Draymond Green may be the best defensive player ever. But uh, the Warriors were unwatchable without Steph. So I'm not even sure Draymond Green is the best defensive player in the league right now. Whoa. That's another hot take. We're gonna get back. Dude, to that. you are you are on it on the hot takes. <laughs> well, I am a LeBron fan, so I don't. Maybe I'm biased. We'll see. Uh, McCollum McCollum's back for Portland. We're gonna see what's happening with that. But now let's go to some not hot. Okay. Hornets. PJ Washington had a stat line this week. It it's the anti Russell Westbrook stat line. Right. Zero For points. Russ was zero points. Zero of seven from the field. Yikes. Zero of two from the line. Yikes. 44 minutes played. Wow. 44. Wow. So he actually made his jersey sweaty and has nothing to show for it. Yeah, he did. Now, listen, he did achieve one thing that I could not do. Everything what's else that? in there I could do. Zero yeah, points. What's that? Yeah. 0 for 7 from the field, 0 for sure. 2 from the line. I could do that. Sure, sure. I couldn't get 44 minutes in the NBA, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give him that. Uh, you know what would have been funny is after the game if he would have said, come on, coach, uh, you just got to give me more time. I'm just getting hot. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just warming up. All right, so also not hot. This is just because of injury. Shea Gilgis Alexander, he's out with plantar fasciitis in his right foot. Yes. Yeah. Won't be sorry. reevaluated hey, until mid. Yeah. yeah. He's reevaluated middle of the month. Uh, sorry to see him go down because he is a bright spot for OKC. Love his game. I wish the Clippers didn't have to get rid of him. Uh, but you know that's life. So I'm, hopefully he comes back and is able to uh, play some meaningful basketball before the end of the season. All right. Last last not not so hot is Myers Leonard. Speaking of OKC, waived by OKC. I, players, I feel like he sounds like a lawyer. He, they yes. fired their lawyer, yes, Myers Leonard. Yes, yes, yes. And he had mutton chops also. Did he? Yes, wow. he did. He does. Was have that him in that picture chop. with Pete Maravich? No, that wasn't him. No, that wasn't Myers him. Leonard was not born yet. Yeah, so he was waived, and uh, yeah, that's what happens. Now, uh, I'm actually going to say one last one. Last one. My, my hot take about how I think the Clippers are actually going to win the championship this year. We'll see how that works out. Okay. They signed Boogie Cousins. I think... That actually doesn't make a dent. No. I, <laughs> <laughs> I love these hot takes, dude. You are, your your shots fired. That's gonna be your new Dan shots fired Ratner is your new. That's your new moniker. That's that's a new one for a therapist too. I'm, yes, I, I exactly. guess I'm getting on all the aggression yeah, exactly. here. Exactly. <laughs> all right, let's move into sneaker vault. Yes, we are. Uh, we we've, we've got way too much show. Uh, we've had a Brooklyn themed show, so it is now time for my sneaker of the week. And my sneaker of the week is the Zoom Basketball Low. It's still in the box. This is a very cool sneaker. Uh, this was Ma uh, uh, this was Steve Nash's signature sneaker that was released in 2008 originally. This is a 2010 version. Uh, there's a, a uh, group that Nike does called N7, and uh, proceeds from N7 products go to help Native American communities. So I thought this was a great collaboration that they did because it's a Steve Nash sneaker for one. It's made of recycled materials for two. 
So uh, there's an environmentally conscious aspect to it. And three, it benefits the negative, the Native American community. Uh, it's a lightweight sneaker, a low top sneaker. I love playing in lows. The colorway is amazing. So this is my nod to the Native American community, to Steve Nash, and to recycling all in one sneaker. Nicely done, Suli. I, I mean, yeah. I was going to make a recycling joke, but because you, you made it so you know, about Native Americans and actually important things. Yes. I'm not going to, I'm not going to say that I thought I saw a part of a milk carton in that recycled shoe. No, I did say it. Oh <laughs> you just said it. Uh, I stuck the joke in anyway. All right. We're going to go out on this note. Okay. All right. Um, Damien Lillard wore a stop Asian hate shirt. This Fantastic. is good. We good love flow. That. Yep. Good flow with the Native American thing you just yep. said. Yep. Recognize other communities that are going through struggles. Embrace those communities. Take a stand to help make a difference in a better world. And Damian Lillard did that. What was great about that was Jeremy Lin uh, picked up on that, which uh, was great because Jeremy Lin was at the forefront of the Stop Asian Hate mu uh, movement in the, in the NBA community. Uh, I just think that that, you know, Dame Lillard is should be outside considered for MVP and, and 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 doing that actually vaults him up in my opinion. I think it's great to take a stand to uh to look out for your brothers and what they're trying to fight for. So him wearing the Stop Asian Hate shirt was great. Thumbs up to that. Uh Dame Lillard, keep doing your thing. It clearly is Dame time all the time. Absolutely. We're going to finish on, on just one thing. And this is going to need to be a longer conversation too. I'm keeping, yes. I'm keeping notes on these when we need a longer yes. conversation, yes. put it in yes. the next we show. Will, That's what we will Celtics. revisit. We will revisit. It's just an interesting dilemma. Can NBA players sometimes keep it too real? Do well, we want NBA players reduced to measured mundane sound bites? Like let's just win. I hate those interviews. Yes. But yeah, does, does you know, does winning really fix everything? Anyways, should NBA players, should they keep it real? Or, well, I, I think you want your NBA players to be authentic, but to a point. Like, you know, the KD, Michael Rappaport, uh, DM beef, that's the kind of reel that's negative, and it, it just doesn't put a good light on anything. So we don't want it that real, but we do want you to stand up like, you know, what, what Dame did with, with wearing the Stop Asian Hatred. Hey that, that's a keep it real where somebody benefits. So maybe it's just keep it real if there's a greater good to it. So think I, before you act, maybe. I, I think I think that's that's perfect, but I also think, and this goes along with what you're saying, if action is needed, keep it real. That that's yep. the time to do it. Yep. And I I love that. The NBA is the best league for that by yeah. far. Yeah. Well, dude, we 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 we've had a ton of show. So much show. Run it back is over delivering, people. When I put the orange hat on, it's time to go. We've, right, we've come to the end. This has been a great episode. We got more basketball next week. I'm Suli McCullough. That's Dan Ratner. We'll see you next week when we run it back. Peace. Peace.